and he, he was embarrassed to approach the Mishkailo because maybe he would say that we decided you're not worthy to be in the Kailo, we're not keeping you on the on the team, but he didn't want to ask him directly. And it turns out he told his wife, I think I better look for a job because it seems that I'm not really a member of the Kailo anymore and I have an obligation to, to support my family. When a man gets married, he signs a document to Ksuva that he will take care of his wife and their needs and support her and give food and clothing. And he told his wife, I'm afraid I have to leave the Kailo. Even though I love being in the Beis Medrash, surrounded by Sfarim, surrounded by learning, the time has come that I have to say goodbye to the Beis Medrash. I'll come visit, I'll come learn when I have time, but I can't be there full time. And it turns out, he saw a sign that said, we need someone to sell fruits. He figured, I don't need much talent to be a fruit salesman. What do you have to do? You just have to know which fruits are ripe and how to tell people which ones to buy and package it in the bag and make some money. So he got a job and he was selling oranges and grapefruits and lemons. Basically, it was a citrus stand. And there was even juices. People could fra- make fresh juice. And one day, a guy comes and says, I'm here for my uh, master. He is a very wealthy man. He wants a dozen of this and a dozen of this and a d- two dozen of this. And he says, okay, sure, help yourself. Pick the fruits that fancy you, the ones that you like best. You probably know better than me. And the guy took the fruits and he said, okay, here's the money. And by the way, here's a tip for you for making sure you're selling your fruits in our neighborhood. Keep staying here. Don't go to a different neighborhood. My master always likes to get fresh fruits every day. He says it's very healthy and it's very good for your eyes. Okay, thank you. Have a good day. And he's counting his money and he's getting ready to close. And all of a sudden, the guy comes back. He says, stop, stop. My master wants to know, where did you get those oranges from? He says, the oranges? Um, uh, my supplier. Why? He says, my master said he never tasted such good oranges in his life. He says, you must have got them from Gan Eden, from Paradise. Do you have the, the, the address where Paradise is? <laughs> and the guy says, no, but um, I'll be happy to give you my, my boss's uh, uh, contact information and you can go speak to him. And he says, no, my master said he wants to speak to you. To me? But I, I told you, I don't even know where he gets the oranges from. Listen, my master wants you. Just come with me, all right? When you close up, we're that big fancy mansion over there. The one that looks like a palace. Come over there. My, my master wants you to come. Don't worry, sir. He'll make it worth your trouble. And as he left, the Yid was closing up his, his uh, fruit stand. And he goes to this man. And as he goes to the man, the man says, Hey, you know, sir, um, pleased to meet you. Um, I wanted to ask you a question. Tell me if you're interested in making a lot more money than selling fruits. He says, why? What do you have in mind? My options are open. He says, well, I wanted to make for myself a beautiful monument. Because I'm getting older, you know. And the man related that he's very rich and very wealthy, but he doesn't have any children. And he wants there to be some remembrance of him in the world. So he decided to make a big statue, a big monument of himself in the main park. And it should be very beautiful, made out of marble, with beautiful jewels.